guys my name's Brad and today I just wanted to do a little video on living day to day with a disability and illness and how a birthday gift from my wife changed my life so in 2007 I was diagnosed with Raynaud's disease for those of you that don't know what that is it's a disease that affects the extremities or the blood circulation to the extremities in your body, example your fingers, toes, um, and it's triggered by cold temperatures, stress, anxiety, many other things. Um, it's a feeling of numbness or pain in your fingers. Um, your fingers will go from white to blue, purple, um, in extreme cold or in any sort of cold, things like that. It's really painful to touch anything. Um, and when you do warm up, it's like a burning sensation in your hands, your feet. It's a painful um, illness to live with. It does cause ulcers on your hands. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a terrible illness to live with. And I live in Melbourne, Australia, so yeah, more often than not, it's fairly cold down here. Um, so then in 2009, I got pleurisy, um, which again is um, fluid on the lungs. Then it became infected, my lungs became infected, my heart was rubbing on my lungs. So I spent a couple weeks in intensive care um, and yeah, spent weeks with wires and plugs hanging out me, um, yeah, it was bad, but during then they, um, diagnosed that I also had rheumatoid arthritis, sorry, arthritis, and scleroderma, which, um, is an autoimmune disease, um, that affects the organs, um, and being that your skin is a major organ, it affected, um, it's a hardening of, of the organs and everything else. And so my skin tightened, my hands become very tight and I have very limited movement in my hands, um, which, yeah, is hard to live every day working and all the other things. Um, and from then on throughout the years I've had, from the ulcers, I would get infections in the cuts and, um, one of my fingers was half eaten away by infection. I had a pick line in my heart for eight weeks, um, of antibiotics to try and stop the infection getting into the bones and stuff like that. Um, I've had two toes amputated, one on each foot, left and right. Um, yeah, the list is never ending. Um, so it is a hard illness to deal with um, and continue working and living everyday normal life like I used to. Um, being in my mid-twenties, and into my thirties, I started to become self-conscious. I was embarrassed to meet new people. I didn't want to shake hands with anyone um, for fear of them grabbing too tight or hitting hands or just seeing my hands because they were starting to curl. And it was very painful and yeah, it's being a guy shaking hands, it's a lot to deal with. It's something that, yeah, I find embarrassing. And yeah, and in the end, I didn't really want to go out. I was yeah, self-isolating myself, sitting at home, watching TV. I was embarrassed to go out to restaurants or things where a waiter would pass a plate and I couldn't grab it properly, I didn't have the strength in my fingers um, or the reach to open up around big glasses, stuff like that. And it played a lot on my mind. I went from 
someone that was always joking around, stuffing around, um, to someone that didn't want to see anyone, didn't want to go out, just sat at home doing nothing. Um, I'd take it out a lot on my wife and daughter, getting angry and um, frustrated with everything. Even if they're trying to help, I'd become snappy and short-tempered and, yeah, I was a bit of an asshole to live with. Um, and took for my wife to say one day that well, I'm not the only one that's hurting. It's hurting her as well, and my daughter, and family, friends. Um, yeah, I'm not the only one that's living with it. She's got to deal with it as well, and has had to deal with it. Um, yeah, from things that I used to do around home and everything else, a lot of that she's had to do now. She's basically become the man of the house and yeah it's been hard for them to live and deal with it as well um yeah in in saying that we didn't i stopped going out a lot going seeing friends going to catch-ups parties stuff like that uh, because yeah i was embarrassed of people might say something or make fun of it and yeah I just didn't want to deal with it I suppose um, and yeah so after that on one of my birthdays my wife bought me a model something to keep me try and keep me busy and it was a, a Titanic a big wooden one as about 1.2 meters long so it's quite a big one all wood had to be all hand built out of timber and nailed I couldn't hold the nails I was so tiny I had to use tweezers and build the whole hull everything else so I built that I started building it sorry and then come time to painting I didn't want to paint it because it's over a thousand dollars worth of model so I decided to go on YouTube and watch a few videos on painting and stuff like that and thought I'd practice on a smaller plastic kit, something cheap. Um, and yeah, started doing that and yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, my first model I built, I put on a Facebook weathering post on a weathering models page and I got made the top 50 of that month of July um, for my first ever model and diorama. And then they notified me the start of 2020 that I come in the top 50 of 2019 for the whole modeling page. And yeah, I thought it was a big achievement. It was good, I was, I was happy, I was a really good model. I had people ask to buy it take it it's gone now I've, it's actually gone to a new home but that inspired me to start building models and yeah and that's what I've done and dioramas and so I practice buying yeah I was buying kits buying paints glues um, and building all different models and yeah I've I'm a lot slower, I guess, than a lot of modelers would be. Um, I do a lot of my models by tweezers because I can't pick up a lot of parts, even models themselves, depending on what they are, I can't pick them up with my hands. Um, so I use stands, I've found other ways to hold things and to paint and airbrushing, everything else. I've just had to find and adapt to ways to make it work um, but I've found it has it's made me more confident made me more confident uh, in talking to people and 
showing my pictures, showing my disability, my hands. And I found that um, the more I've shown, I've always been scared to show people or to say I try, I have my hands in my pockets, things like that. Whereas now I've found people are good when they know you've got a disability. People will help you out. They will help you lift something or grab something if you're having trouble with it. Um, I guess a lot of it was in my head. Um, even through to friends, I knew who my good friends, I know who my good friends are, but it's just something that sits in your mind, I suppose, and now it is getting easier. I, I'm not afraid to tell people, look, this is how it is, this is what I can do, what I can't do, um, and yeah, I've found it has freed me, it's taken a big weight off my shoulders, um, and yeah, I've found doing all the models and everything else has, yeah, given me time not thinking, when I'm building a model, I'm not thinking about my hands, I'm not thinking about anything else, and I've as fiddly as it is and some of the parts are so tiny you need tweezers which I need them all the time but dealing with tiny tiny pieces I thought it would be stressful but it, it's actually as stupid as it sounds it's relaxing for me um, and yeah and building all my models I build from kits but all the dioramas, garages, or any landscapes I've learnt to build from scratch by hand. And yeah, it's become a really good, um, really good hobby to get into. It's kept my mind off everything. And yeah, I wasted a lot of years um, feeling sorry for myself, sitting at home, watching TV, not doing nothing when I could have been out making the most of them years and I just hope this video can show and help people that yeah not, not everyone's judging and a lot 99% of people will help you out if you're having trouble with things if you have a disability things like that and people are forgiving of it and yeah, and if you find yourself a hobby, whether it be modelling, painting, whatever it is you think you'd like to do, I found it, it's helped turn my life around, change it, and yeah, only for the better. So don't let a, an illness or a disability hold you back. If you find yourself a hobby, you never know, modelling may be your thing, painting, whatever it be. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, share it if you know anyone that you think might need a little bit of inspiration in building. Um, yeah, it's a great hobby to get into. I'll, I could put up a video of basic tools you'll need to get started, whether it be plastic model building, basic tools to get started, or landscapes if you just wanna build land and water and grass and rocks and all the other little hints and tips I've learned along the way. Um, I'll leave you with a few little videos of some of the models I've built and hopefully see you next time. Thank you.